thank you for joining us today. Uh, and it's it's true. Um, for those of you who have not been to Germany, who have not been to Fulda yet, um, Ilka and I come from Fulda University of Applied Sciences. Um, so the name already tells you that we are a University of Applied Sciences opposed to a university. Um, and we thought uh, today we'll talk about um, international study programs. Natalia said it, there are over 400 uh, universities in Germany. Um, at the, at, I think 430 something, 435, and there are at the moment over 21,000 study programs on offer, um, and this, which is a huge amount. And 90% of these study programs are taught in German or require German skills, and only a small group of study programs, which we call international study programs, requires a lower level of German or no German skills at all, and they are made mostly then taught in English. Um, so we thought it's maybe a good idea to talk uh, about those programs today um, and the ones Fulda University offers. Um, maybe quick overview, uh, there are 350,000 international students in Germany at the moment. That's 12% uh, of the overall student population, or that's roughly 3 million people. Um, the international students often come because of uh, the great quality of education, um, really good living conditions, um, except for the weather maybe, now that I'm talking to people in Brazil, perhaps, um, <laughs> and, uh, and the affordability. So we'll get to that later, that there are, for instance, no tuition fees, um, but also living costs in terms of um, a price value ratio is actually really good in Germany. And then there are great career prospects. So many international students come to Germany not only because they would like to study, but also they would like to stay and work. And at the moment, the recent numbers I, I read is that we need 400,000 people um, to fill open jobs, job vacancies in Germany every year, not in total, but every year over the next years to um, conquer that uh, labor shortage. So um think about it studying in germany but also staying in germany is uh, very much welcome um for those of you who have not been to germany yet or to to fulda uh i wanted to start off with showing you where we are located um so obviously uh in europe and then within germany we have a very central location um and we are about an hour with a high velocity train an hour and a half with a regional train northeast of the city of Frankfurt, um, which also home, is home to Germany's largest airport. So you most, most likely arrive to Frankfurt when you fly in. And other major German cities you might have heard of, Berlin, Hamburg, Munich, Cologne, they are merely three hours away by train. And places like Paris and Brussels are like five hours away from Fulda. Um, so as I said, I'm at the uh, Belgium French border uh, in in the west of Belgium, and it took me six hours to get here. Um, so you can uh, full as a great starting point and we're very well connected for explorations um, in Germany and in Europe. If we zoom in a little bit, uh, looking at the at the surroundings, um, Fulda is surrounded by lower mountain ranges. The closest um, being the Rhön, the so-called land of open distances. When I say mountains, I mean up to a thousand meters. And um, it's a great green, lush, uh, very clean area. Um, it's really good for hiking, biking, canoeing. Um, you can go paragliding and in the mountains are high enough in winter to have snow, um, real snow. Um, and so you can go skiing, cross country skiing. And uh, one of the latest trends I learned is snow kiting. So you, you are on a snowboard and you have a kite, so they bring both together, and apparently the Rhön is a great place to try that. Um, the city of Fulda itself is um, a smaller town. It's a very old town, founded over two, 1,200 years ago. Um, we have 70,000 inhabitants, and um, it, you can walk everywhere, everything's actually close by, um, obviously, there are buses going. Um, if you don't feel like walking or biking, is is very popular. Um, yeah, being that old, we have many historic 
buildings, old churches. You can see Fulda Cathedral here. We've got a, um, a palace with palace gardens, a baroque quarter, and then medieval parts of the city with these half-timbered houses and cobble streets. So it's very, very um, German, I'd say. There are a couple of breweries and many cafes and restaurants. Um, it's a town that attracts many tourists, um, once because it's so central in Germany, so families and friends meet in Fulda, um, but also it's just very, very cozy. And um, I believe they're opening the, the Christmas market next week, so we'll have like a month of Christmas market and then Fulda feels extremely cozy. Uh, it gets dark quite early these days, and then you've got the, the lightings and the smell of hot wine and waffles and... and um, pancakes and stuff. So um, it's actually very cool um, and a very sweet, cozy, beautiful city. Um, the university, zooming in a little further, is uh, a little off center on a little hill. It takes you about like 15 minutes from the center to walk or a couple of minutes by bus. Um, we are almost 50 years old and nowadays we have eight academic departments and about 60 study programs. Um, usually when you ask someone about differences between universities and universities of applied sciences in Germany, there are often three main um, aspects that differentiate um, both types of institution. Um, people say universities of applied sciences are smaller, that they have a narrow range of subjects to choose from. Some are business schools, some mostly deal with health sciences, and you can't obtain your doctorate. Uh, and that changed, uh, the latter changed in Fulda a couple of years ago in 2018, and we became the first university of applied sciences in Germany to award doctoral degrees um, independently. So not in cooperation with the university, but as a university of applied sciences. And that um, was a very good signal and sign for the research strength that can be found in Fulda. Um, so nowadays we offer uh, everything from preparatory programs, I'll get into the bachelor's, master's, and even a PhD you can obtain. And um, yeah, that's pretty special. So first difference to a university um, is not, doesn't apply to Fulda. Um, yeah, a couple of impressions from our campus. We are what we call a campus university. All our facilities are located in one spot, in one area. Um, so you don't have to rush around town, across town, between lectures. Um, also, all the contact people, international office, the, the academic departments, other support services, writing center, language center, um, they're all located on campus. So um, it's really easy to just make use of the support, to um, meet your fellow students, to contact staff. Um, we've got a library, university cafeteria that caters for, I'd say, all the, the dietary preferences, vegan food, vegetarian food. Um, they, they do lunch and recently started also serving dinner um, options. So that's uh, a very great offer. You see, we have green areas. There are also sports facilities. So everything um, can take place on campus um, on a day. Uh, yeah, universities of applied sciences uh, sometimes have a narrow range, but that's definitely not the case for Fulda. You can see we've got eight academic departments ranging from more technical engineering subjects to natural sciences, um, but also health sciences and social sciences. And um, I am very happy that uh, Ilka Gesemann from SK, from Social and Cultural Sciences, is supporting me today. Um, so we will get into, into those study programs and into the masters there in a moment. Um, but just to let you know that we have a representative with us. Uh, what's it like, University of Applied Sciences? Well, the applied always plays a major role. Um, you really have that hands-on learning experience. Um, we also call it practice orientation. So there's um, not only um, seminars and classes where you learn the theory, there are always um, group projects and case studies. And depending on the field you're in, also you get into the lab, into the workshop, um, and, uh, and yeah, work with the real deal in, um, in business, for instance, where you would not have a, a laptop in th this case, as you see it here, you do, um, startups, you could, you deal with, um, case studies, um, you would visit companies or companies would come visit, um, 
the university and give um, lectures about um, the real world out there, teaching staff or practitioners. Um, and I'm sure Vika can go into detail, uh, but model United Nations, stuff like that would also be a very hands on learning experience. Um, in addition to the theoretical education you can get in your in your classes. Um, yeah, as I said, we have um, about 60 study programs. I know that this is a little bit small, but it's difficult to show them all on one slide. Um, if you visit Fulda University's website, um, there is a database and you can look for the different uh, departments. You can find, um, you can search for bachelor's programs, master's programs, you can filter according to the, is it summer intake or winter intake or taught in English or taught in German. So, um, and that on the website is like the most recent information. So um, I highly recommend to look that up. And yeah, I said that 90% of our study programs in Germany require German skills. Um, it's definitely um, a plus to learn German, to know German, um, not only to have a bigger selection when it comes to studying um, or to meet the admission requirements of those programs, but also um, you've got better career prospects, um, definitely for internships, for um, entry level jobs, um, or maybe if you wanna write your thesis with an organization, it, uh, it will be helpful to know German um, to know your way around um, Germany as well, to go to um, yeah, appointments with local authorities, uh, immigration office, or when opening a bank account. It just comes, these people speak English, but it definitely comes in handy to have a level of German. Um, it just opens more doors. Landlords are most likely to, or more likely to reply to you when you approach them in German. Uh, certain scholarships, uh, require German skills. So learn if you're thinking about studying in Germany, um, I highly recommend to to also start to look for learning uh, for German learning opportunities um, near you. Um, an exemption of uh, requiring a very high command of German skills, as I said, are international study programs. On bachelor's level at the moment, we have three science and engineering, international health science and international business and management. From the winter intake 23, 2023 on, so in a year, we will add a fourth program for food technology. And then that would that will be uh, fully taught in English or fully taught in German. So you can choose which version, um, which track you'd like to, to, to um, select. And on master's level, we have five programs um, at the moment, global software development, international food business and consumer studies, and international management, and then the two from social and cultural sciences, human rights studies, and politics, law, and society, and intercultural communication, European studies, um, belong to the department uh, Ika Gesemann um, represents today. So I leave uh, the details for her. Um, but allow me that one point already that uh, it's very, very, very likely, uh, maybe Ika, you can confirm in a moment, that human rights studies and politics, law, and society as of now is um, requiring German and English skills, but also from the winter intake 2023 on, there will be an English study track um, that will not require German skills. That what, that's my last information, but maybe Ilka can conclude. Right. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Uh, so good news. Um, that still doesn't mean that you shouldn't learn German, uh, but there are more English taught programs coming up. Um, so I just drop that here, leave that with you, the information. If you need some preparation uh, for bachelor's or master's programs, for instance, in order to receive a university entrance qualification or to uh, learn some German prior to your studies, we have different preparatory programs. Um, so we can pick you up wherever you are at the moment and whatever you need, and then help you transfer into bachelor's, master's, and you can stick around for your PhD as you've seen. Um, all this seems to uh, work out quite well. I mentioned in the beginning, 12% of students in Germany are international students. In Fulda, it's actually 16.5. Um, and those are the numbers from the last winter semester. Um, I am expecting the new numbers from this winter semester any day. And it looks like that the, that the amount of international student has even increased since the last year. And I believe we are talking about 17% international students at the moment. Um, and you can see where they come from. Um, they come from sub-Saharan African countries, 
from yeah, Asia, from Pan-Asian countries, um, and from Eastern Europe or from Europe in general. And um, we've got students from South America. They, last winter semester we had 60 and 10 of them came from Brazil. Um, we don't charge tuition fees. We are a state university and our money mostly comes through the ministry and the ministry gets basically tax money. Um, so that's how the tuition is financed in Germany. Um, what students have to pay is what we call a semester contribution of around 300 euro per semester. Included in that already is the semester ticket. So um, a bus and rail pass for public transportation uh, uh, in Fulda and around um, I think exempted are these high velocity trains, but all the regional trains to Kassel, for instance, to visit the Brothers Grimm Museum there, or the Documenta, one of the world's most famous art exhibitions, or to visit fellow students in Marburg, or to go to um, a concert in Gießen, to visit the um, Künstlerkolonie Mathildenhöhe in Darmstadt, that's a world UNESCO her uh, World Heritage Site, um, or to even Mainz. Um, and then, of course, Frankfurt for museum visits, concerts, getting to the airport. So all those, the, obviously the buses in the morning um, to go to campus. So all that's included in your semester ticket. Um, so you can really make use of it and go around the state. And from what I've heard, Germany is reintroducing a, a Germany-wide public transportation ticket um, in the future, which we had this year already, the nine euro ticket. You paid nine euro in a month and you could take any um, uh, any train, any bus, except these high velocity trains. Um, and I think the new system is supposed to be 49 euro in a month. And then you can go and take buses and regional trains across Germany. Um, and with your semester ticket, you'd get it in, in Fulda, in Hessen already. And then I believe if you pay 49 euro, once this is established, you can also take um, other trains all around Germany and buses, so you can really sustainably explore the rest of the country and keep in touch with friends and family. Um, students have to pay health insurance, they have to pay rent, and uh, obviously food, and then whatever expenses you might have in your personal life, I don't know, makeup, uh, magazine subscriptions, Netflix account, um, and fine dining, I don't know, <laughs> uh, a gym membership. So you end up needing about 850, 900 euro and 934 euros, also the amount um, at the moment you need to receive um, for your visa to, to show sufficient funding. You need to have 934 euro in a month. Um, so you can see we've got a wide range of options. Uh, we've got a great combination of theory and practice. Um, even more so in what we call dual study programs. Um, we are fairly young, so we still have, uh, and we grew a lot, so we have new buildings with state-of-the-art equipment. Um, we've got the whole range from preparatory programs to um, doctoral level. We've got a, a big and thriving international community. Being a campus university in a smaller town, we've got short distances and um, extensive support structures, so for whatever challenge you might have to face. Uh, I'm sure there is a good offer in on campus and in Fulda um, if you need help. And it's a beautiful historic city and um, there's loads to do in your free time in and around Fulda. And if that's not enough, you just hop on a train and you go to the mountains or you go to the cities um, nearby to um, do what you like to do. Um, if you have questions, um, there is our student administration um, approachable for questions about application and admission, um, but you can also always reach out to me um, in the international office, and um, I can then also forward your inquiries to um, responsibles within the university. Um, yeah, and for that, I already thank you for your attention so far, and um, now I need to find the right button to finish my presentation with my screen in my hotel room. Here we are. Uh, and um, yeah, thank you so much. And uh, dear Ilka, uh, I hope that didn't take too long. The floor is definitely yours.
Okay, thanks a lot, Marco. Um, maybe we just have a short break to allow people to ask questions. Maybe there are some questions already and um, people didn't manage to write into the chat um, while listening to your presentation. So if there are questions already, you can uh, write them into the chat and we could answer them directly. If not, we can uh, address them after the second uh, presentation, of course. I think we can uh, go on and then we address all of them at the end. Okay, that's yeah, great. Perfect. So, whoops. Okay, so I would like to uh, to present uh, one of the international master's programs Marco was talking about, uh, the University of Fulda offers um, international master's and bachelor's programs. And um, they all have a couple of features with which make them international programs. Um, for example, I'm, I'm representing one of the international master programs and it's called intercultural communication and European studies. So it's highly interdisciplinary combining two major subjects, intercultural communication on the one side and European studies on the other side. One being more um, language and culture communication oriented and the other one uh, has a strong focus on politics and on law as well. Um, so that's the program I'm um, the coordinator for. That means that I'm the first contact person for students or for people who are interested in the study program. They can approach me via email or telephone to ask about the program, the application process, um, the conditions, career opportunities, etc. And in our department, it's a department of social and cultural sciences, um, every program has its own um, program coordinator. We have um, different tasks um, and additional tasks like for, for example, being responsible for uh, international exchanges or being responsible for um, organizing um, internships and internship reflection etc so i'm responsible for this program um, and our department offers two international master programs the other, the other one is called human rights studies in politics law and society marco uh, mentioned that one already and um, I will focus on the intercultural communication and European studies program. That's uh, where my experience and um, my focus lies, of course. Um, but I can also tell you a little bit about the human, uh, human rights master program. Um, this um, ICAOS, ICAOS is the short form, the abbreviation of intercultural communication and European studies program. It has been it's implemented at uh, Hochschule Fulda in 1999. So it's one of our oldest programs, uh, oldest international programs at least. And um, what makes it international? For example, it's bilingual. The classes are instructed in either German or English. It's like a 50-50 percentage. So, um, you need definitely um, German and English language skills. <clears throat> uh, depending on your mother tongue, there are different levels possible. Um, if, for example, um, as a Brazilian student with uh, Brazilian Portuguese as your native language, uh, both German and English are foreign languages for you, so you can provide a higher level in one of the languages probably English, and you can um, provide a test um, of a slightly lower level in the second language, which which would be German. So it's an individual question uh, when you meet the, re the, the language requirements, but um, it's a, um, that, that's where we can advise how you can prepare for, for these required language tests, which language tests are accepted, etc. Um, the principle that it's um, it's run in German and in English is um, 
partly because of the topic intercultural communication. Intercultural communication is um, a topic students um, with international experience are interested in usually. Uh, many of our students um, already have um, international work or study experience and um, many of them want, of the international students at least, want to, to stay in Germany, want to work in Germany and uh, therefore want to, to study German as well, or they speak German already. Um, so this program is uh, bilingual, it's an international study group um, that means we can accept 30 students per year and uh, we recruit internationally because it's um, part of the, the concept of this uh, program. So usually we have, um, when we have 30 students per year, we have about 20 students from abroad and uh, about 10 students from Germany. And uh, when I say 20 students from abroad, it's usually um, a variety of about 13, 14 or 15 different nationalities. So um, usually it's one or two students from the United States, one or two from a South American country, uh, one or two from an African country, a couple of students from Asia and a couple of students from European Union member states and a couple of students from Germany. So it's it's highly diverse and very international, so it's possible to, to make intercultural experiences, uh, not only as an academic subject, but also in an international intercultural classroom. So the topics uh, in themselves, they are highly international as well. Um, and um, part of the program is an internship abroad. Internship abroad means that the German students go to another country, they go abroad. International students can also do their internship in Germany. Um, the internship lasts um, 10 weeks and it's um, in the curriculum it's placed uh, behind the second semester. So after the second semester, um, students uh, do their internship um, either in Germany, um, you can do it in Fulda for example, but uh, many go to, to bigger cities like um, Berlin or Munich or Hamburg. Um, yeah, but many also do it in, in Fulda, of course. And um, <clears throat> the German students and also many international students uh, go to other countries. For example, um, since they focus on European studies, um, many want to undertake their internship in, in Brussels, which is sort of the, the European Union capital because many of the institutions are located there, or to Strasbourg, which is another place for European institutions such as the, the European Parliament. Um, so the, the internship um, should I don't say must because it's it's not a 100% strict requirement, but it should take place outside your home country. That's what the, the principle of the program is. Um, and we have quite a few international guest teachers um, every year from our partner universities or from um, long lasting cooperation activities with, um, with institutions, international organizations or European institutions. So all these features are um, aspects that, that make the, the program an international one. Um, the regular duration of studies is four semesters. Um, there are programs in Germany or in other European countries, um, master programs that last only two semesters. Um, but many in Germany, <coughs> sorry, many in Germany last indeed uh, four semesters. Um, this program is always starting in October. So it starts only once a year. You can't apply to, to the summer semester. You always apply for the winter semester. And as I said earlier, one intake of students is uh, limited to 30 places. So, 30 students uh, per year can be enrolled. Um, I mentioned the internship already. Part of the program are also field trips. Um, 
in the first semester, the students go to a place in the Black Forest to have a seminar and then they go to Strasbourg one day um, in order to visit the European Parliament and to talk to uh, representatives from European institutions. And in the second semester, um, the whole group goes to Brussels um, to visit European institutions, like the European Parliament, again, the European Commission, um, Euro European uh, Social and Economic Committee or other, um, or even NGOs that uh, do lobbying with the uh, European Commission, etc. Um, yeah, this is the, the field trips are um, part of the, the concept that um, the programs are um, practice oriented. Uh, Marco mentioned that earlier that there's a focus on hands on experience and on um, getting an insight into how employers, how organizations uh, really work and what they do and to try this themselves. So that's the, the practical uh, practice oriented approach of a University of Applied Sciences. Um, whereas at the same time, um, other modules are more research oriented um, in order to, to prepare for academic and scientific work as well. So the career objectives um, of students who study this program, um, many of them uh, want to um, work in international organizations um, or in international NGOs in European institutions or in international companies, uh, usually large companies um, that work um, globally, more or less. Um, many of our graduates actually go into research, uh, although they have chosen the program um, due to its, uh, its practical approach. <laughs> um, for example, in our own PhD program, um, there are many, many graduates of, of this program as well. Um, Many students uh, work in other universities, for example, in, in uh, international offices. Um, I think whenever Marco goes on a business uh, trip somewhere and through a conference, he, he meets an IKEOS graduate somewhere um, and he, he keeps sending me pictures of himself with a uh, graduate from our program. <laughs> So, and then they work as experts in communication, in politics, in international cooperation, development cooperation, um, etc. Um, so, it, it depends very much on the interests and the focus um, of the students and what they have studied in, in their bachelor programs, uh, what they want to do afterwards, and if they put their focus on intercultural communication or if they, they are more interested in European politics or in international politics, etc. So, there's a big variety of um, job opportunities and um, yeah, career perspectives. So, what's um, special about this program? Um, when we ask students or when, when graduates um, come back to alumni activities um, after studying, um, they always mention that um, they had this, this great company, this great um, community in, in the IKEAS program or at our department. Um, the program is really very international and, and it's a very open-minded community. So um, that's, that's what people say at least and uh, I can really confirm it. It's, it's, um, it's a great group. Uh, very, every, every group is different but um, all the groups are just fantastic and they, they build a great community. Um, we do a lot um, in order that people get to know each other right in the beginning, um, like integration activities and team building activities. Uh, for example, with uh, we start with a um, with a workshop, uh, team building workshop um, in the first two weeks in order to to bring the the people together so that uh, people get to know each other and um, so usually after this um, event, this one day or two day uh, trip. Um, you know all your classmates and all your classmates know you and um, that's 
makes it, that, that makes it much easier to um, to feel well when when the semester really starts. Um, what students appreciate as well is the bilinguality. Um, it's quite challenging to um, to study in two foreign languages, but um, people highly appreciate that that you can improve two foreign languages at the same time, and that you reach a professional level in these two two levels uh, while studying it. And um, a program like this, with this range of uh, of topics, with up to date topics um, with this community of people. Um, so great you'd say it, it broadens your horizon a lot and it, it was a great international experience and uh, they all make friends from all over the world. So they um, it's, a, it's a good networking opportunity, but they really make friends and um, very often these are lasting lasting relationships and friendships. Um, yeah, and about Fulda as a place to study, um, we know we are aware that usually international students um, take a first look at these big university cities like Berlin or Munich or Heidelberg or Hamburg. Um, but on the other hand, we must say our experience is that um, students, once they are in Fulda, they really appreciate um, Fulda as a place to study. It's, it's very convenient for, especially for international students. Um, for example, there are many student initiatives. So there are, although it's a, it's a small town, there are many initiatives in which you can take part um, um, with very committed people. Um, there's um, there are good opportunities for student life on campus and in town. As I said earlier, it's very easy to to get to know people um, because it's um, it's not so big. And and the the atmosphere in our departments, it's not only in our department, uh, it's in the other departments as well. There's a quite familiar atmosphere. So um, once you're there. Um, after a relatively short time, uh, you will know quite a few people and many people will know you and the, the professors as well, the teachers as well. Um, and we can say that many students stay actually. So it's not that um, people, all the people leave Fulda after studying. So many, many international students stay and work for local companies or at the university. Um, and Fulda is um, quite close to, to other places of interest in Germany, for example, Berlin or Frankfurt, uh, etc. The, the train connections are really good and it's easy, easy to travel within Germany. Um, for our ICAOS program, I can say that um, in the first two semesters, um, students stay in Fulda because they have a pretty tight schedule to study. And uh, they are taken on these field trips to Strasbourg and to Brussels. And then um, they undertake the internship and they use this internship opportunity to see other places like um, Berlin or Frankfurt or Hamburg or uh, other places abroad. Um, yeah. Um, about the structure of the program, I hope you can read it. It may depend on, on the size of your screen. Um, as I said, in the first two semesters, um, the, the schedule of ICAO students are pretty packed. You have um, like uh, 20 to 24 um, units. Un a unit would be 45 minutes of, of classes per, per week. So it's um, intensive classroom learning in the first two semesters. There are modules uh, that are completed in one semester, like here, as you can see, module one or module two, they are completed in the first semester. Other modules like four and six, um, they have a span of two semesters and each module ends with an exam. So for each of you, the modules, you can see it's 10. Um, you, you will need to take an uh, exam and uh, you will get a grade, which makes the overall uh, great. Um, 
Yes, yeah, you can see one. Uh, the first semester is from uh, October to February, second semester is from April to July. Then people go uh, on the internship um, from August to like November or end of October. And then starts uh, the third semester with uh, advanced uh, studies, um, an internship reflection and preparation of your master thesis with an exam seminar. And in the fourth, uh, fourth semester, you would write your master thesis. Um, you can take further classes. You can still take classes in the fourth semester, but you don't have to. So um, some people use the opportunity to spend a semester abroad at one of our partner universities and write the master thesis there or um, move to another place um, and uh, write the, the master thesis remote. Um, the other program we mentioned earlier, the human rights studies in politics, law and society, it has a quite similar structure. Uh, the topics are different, of course, but the structure with four semesters and um, an internship after the second semester, um, the internship is 10 weeks as well, um, but it doesn't need to be uh, abroad. So in, in this program, um, we call it MAS program because the of, of our abbreviation would be MAS. Um, in this MAS program, you don't, uh, you can do your internship in Germany or in, if you come from Brazil, you can do your internship in Brazil. It's no um, intercultural experience necessarily. Um, you can see the topics of the modules here in this overview. A couple of modules are organized together with the IKEA students, like for example, the social scientific methodology. Um, here, the students um, of the MAS program and the IKEA program uh, study together. Uh, and as well in the cross studies uh, module, this is organized for these two international master programs together as well. Um, what is special about the Human Rights Studies program is uh, that it's relatively new. We started in 2018, I think, so it's still quite new. And um, it started as a program in German with a couple of lectures in English, and now it's turning around. Now the majority of classes is in English and only a small part in German, and from next year on from winter semester 2023 um, there will be an English study track that means in order to be admitted to the program you don't need to provide uh, tests or a certain level of German language skills. You can still study German then while you study the, the master program um, but you don't have to uh, reach a, a certain level in order to be admitted to the program. Uh, this is because we found out after the implementation of the program um, that we had um, a huge demand for this program from abroad and people were, f were asking whether it's possible to study this program in English entirely. Whereas the other program, the IKEA's program, we have many students um, who already speak several languages due to this topic, intercultural communication. But here in this human rights studies program, uh, we have a lot of experts in law or in politics or sociology. And uh, they don't have this affinity to languages, to foreign languages. So we decided that this would be a good program um, that can be offered entirely in English. And this uh, will happen from next year. Okay. Here you can see um, impressions from our field trips to Brussels and you can see um, our websites uh, for these two programs and um, our Instagram account, our Instagram channel of the department where you can get a good uh, impression of um, what else is happening in, in the department. Um, so. I would like to finish with a couple of, of impressions, what I think, um, what it feels like to be a student at um, at Hochschule Fulda or at, at our department in, in one of our international programs. 
Um, I think the, the main arguments for our international students were that um, is that, that they find a very familiar atmosphere at our department, um, that it's very easy to, to get to know people and um, it, it's easy to get in touch with the teachers. And um, so, as I said earlier, you will, you will know people and people will know you and the teachers will also know you. It's not, it's not so big where you are somehow left alone and don't know anybody. So I think that that's quite convenient for international students. And um, the German students um, that are enrolled in these international programs, um, they have made a decision for an international program and they are usually very open-minded and very interested in um, getting together with international students. Um, this is also an argument for an international students to uh, choose one of these international program options because it's just a community of people who are all interested in, in international networks and inter making international friends, etc. Um, yeah, and um, as I said earlier, we, we have um, a contact person for each of the programs. So, for example, if you're interested in studying intercultural communication and European studies, um, I would be your first contact person to ask about um, requirements, specific language tests, um, how to prepare for your studies, uh, scholarship opportunities, etc. Um, and the same applies for the human rights program. There is my uh, colleague Philippe, who is um, the first contact person and who um, also um, is the advisor during your, your studies in this program. Um, so as a student, you, you will get in touch with us before you even go to Fulda and um, we will stay your, your contact persons during your studies and even afterwards because we are also organizing the alumni activities, um, stay in touch, um, etc. Um, yeah, what people really appreciate in Fulda as well when you ask them, um, we, we have a new cohort of students, of course, because um, because the, the winter semester just started a couple of weeks ago. Um, and what they say right now is that um, they really appreciate the clean air. Uh, Marco mentioned the, the Rhön mountain hill area and but also in, in the city of Fulda, it's, it's true. Um, the, the air is very clean when you come from, from a big city, then um, you will really enjoy <laughs> the surroundings, uh, the environment and clean air. Um, cycling is possible in town and you can, um, we, we have easy local um, public transport and you can use a semester ticket, but if you're into sports, um, it's uh, really easy to, to get around by bicycle as well. Um, and then it's a very safe city. Um, you don't need to be um, afra afraid of, of going out um, at night or going home alone. I mean, you always should be careful, of course, but it's not like in a really big city like in Frankfurt or, or Berlin. It's, it's just different. Um, Fulda is a relatively safe place, actually. And uh, as we, we are a small university, uh, that's right, but there um, is an enormous offer of um, activities like the Model United Nations uh, program where you can take part in, in simulations of the United Nations, um, which is very popular and um, very usually very competitive to get in. And um, all the students activities that are offered and um, the the jobs that can be offered to, to students to make a living. Um, well, there, there are quite a few um, opportunities to to have a really good student life, I would say. That's what, what people say uh, when you ask them, actually. Okay, so I would, um, I would finish here. Here are our contact details again. And um, yeah.